Good afternoon, Truth Wins team. This is Galen. And Randy Keith. And we're happy to be here today on lesson number three. Today's an exciting day. It's um, December 31st, 2021, New Year's Eve. It's the dawn of a new year. And we know that 2022 will be the year for me and you. So we're celebrating. And the exciting part is as we study Job, we will learn what he learned and turn um, our trials and tests from where they're at into the prosperity like Job did. We look back to lesson number two, and we see that Job was a good man. He would be like your neighbor that appears to be perfect. He, he does what's right. He volunteers to help people. He volunteers at the food closet. He goes to church. He does all the things that would make you say, oh, well, he's got it all together. But the thing he's missing is he's just doing acts and works. He's actually just kind of a self-righteous person not relying on God. And we see that that's sort of the position Job was in. He'd heard what you should do, so he did what was supposed to happen. And because God did set up his kingdom, it does work. If you bring your tithes into the storehouse, it, it does open the windows of heaven. So people that aren't really born-again Christians can do it, and it will work because God said it will work. So they can use the promises of God and still not really know God. And that's the position we see Job in. We see Job did have a clue, though, more than some, because he had ancestors that told stories because they probably didn't use books as much back in the time of Job. The stories were passed down from his ancestors like Abraham, Isaac, Joseph. So he he knew how God worked because we know we see in Joseph's life just many miracles happen and how he got kept getting promoted and promoted. He was in jail and then he was promoted. So Job used those same concepts. So Job in the story is different than his friends because he uses the name Yahweh for God where all the other characters that are part of the book use L. And so Randy's going to tell you a little bit about the difference between L and Yahweh. Well, L is like a generic word uh, for the word of God. And, and, you, and they, they would add extra uh, uh, adjectives to the word L like the, the God of the of Satan, you could say <laughs> El Satan, you know, or something like that. Or you could well, say... Well, it was really El, El Bell. Bell. El Bell. Yeah. Or, and and so really, uh, Job did have some con, uh, understanding because he used the word Yahweh, Yahweh for the Lord, as we translated it, in, in the King James Version, Yahweh is the, the law or the God of blessing or really basically the word of God. Well, right. Yahweh is the covenant God. We see with Eve after Adam and Eve sinned, God made a covenant with her. And covenants are kind of interesting because sometimes they're two-way covenants or sometimes one offers something like the stronger, more powerful, does a covenant with the weaker. And in the case of this, God did a covenant with Eve where he offered her future children and said the children would come and conquer Satan. And so that was a great promise. And then we see as we go along, there's the promise that was given to Noah, and the promise given to Abraham. And so Job knew all those promises, and they were very important, but he didn't exactly understand them. He'd heard them, but he didn't really know them all and how they operated. It's kind of like if you know there's a cake and you could make it, uh, but you don't got the recipe, whoops, if you don't have the recipe, it doesn't work so well. So that's why the one nice thing is God came up with what I call the great GPS, better than the one in your car, but it works about the same way. What do you think? Yeah, God's perfect system. And that perfect system gives you a gives you the really the recipe. Right. So what it's like, it's like when you go out to do anything, you should 
stop, pray first, kind of set your GPS, your God's perfect system before you go. It's like when you get in your car, um, hopefully you turn it on, but sometimes kind of like Job, you might go, well, I just know where I'm going and I don't have to worry. And you're not expecting any construction on the road or any problems and you drive and you get lost. But the good part is if you get lost, you can always turn your GPS in your car on and maybe your route will be a little longer or a little out of the way, but you will get to your destination. And that's sort of how it is with God. If you go off on your own and at any time you can turn on your GPS, your God's perfect system, and he will direct your path perfectly. So in my life, I've had many times where I can see using God's perfect system is helpful. How about you, Randy? Have you had any, do you have any stories like family stories or anything? Yes. Uh, well, my dad was in the Air Force for 20 years, and he, he had uh, very, I uh, would say, he flew bombers for the military. And uh, he always said, hey, when he came home after a long flight, I remember him saying several times that if it wasn't for the grace of God, he would be dead. And I'm going, whoa, as a little kid, you know, <laughs> going, whoa. So it kind of said, and he said he always prayed. He always prayed the 23rd Psalm, and especially the fifth verse says, Yes, I go through the valley shadow of death. I fear no evil, for thou art with me, Lord. So God is with us always. Thou art with me, Lord. Thy word, or I, I always say, I, I say word and spirit because the rod and the staff is the word and spirit. Right. Well, an, another example I can give you um, happened to my son in law. He was driving along and really like in the natural realm, he drove up to a stoplight and it was red and he stopped because that's what you do at a stoplight. Well, the light turned green, but his GPS or his God's perfect system said to him, don't go. And the next thing you know, along came a car that ran the red light and had he gone, he and his family could have all been killed. So that's God's perfect system protecting us. If we get up in the morning, ask God to guide us, and listen to the still small voice, he will help us. Um, also, other times I ask God, because there is the promise in the Bible that bring your tithes into the storehouse and he'll open the windows of heaven and pour out more blessing than you have room to receive. Well, I know my parents had given me things, different people I knew had, but I wanted to see, because to me kind of it just means men, just any men anywhere. So uh, I was specifically praying to God that I wanted on that day, and I thought, I don't know how he's going to come up with this, but of course God can. That's the good part. So I was going to Disneyland, and I wanted to have somebody give me something that I didn't know that I would know it was God opening the windows of heaven and blessing me. So we're standing in the line. This is a while back when you did things different. It's not exactly today where you get tickets to enter Disneyland. You ha used to have to wait in a line and purchase your tickets. So my family and I are waiting in the line to buy tickets. And a person walks up to me and says, I have extra tickets. Would you like some free tickets to get into Disneyland? And there you go. God gave me free entrance into Disneyland. And I said, Eureka. <laughs> because God cares about the little things. I mean, the big thing was important not to drive through the green light when the person's running the red light, but he cares about the little things. Another example, on a different day, I was hoping, or when I wasn't hoping, I was actually praying, because that's different than hope, because hope is just wishing, and actually using your faith is knowing God will come through, and I just knew my GPS system would work, so I said to God, when I go shopping, I'm going to make a list, and I want to see, you know, that things go well and you direct my path. Well, sure enough, I went shopping and every item on my list, amazingly, was on sale. So when I came home, I had many bargains and I just gave God the glory for, for helping to show like it happens everywhere. It's just amazing what God will do. So we. So I just wanted to say, if if you don't tithe, you should. Uh, God said, prove him. And the thing is, is when you tithe, you put the whole, the ninety percent, in God's hands. God makes sure that the devourer doesn't have, because God is a part of your your monetary system. 
Right. So we see Job was doing that because he was the most prosperous man in the the region. But there there is more to that. There is the GPS that we have to stay in faith, and we will learn more about how to do all that as we go along. Um, I think we'll. That's probably all. We hope you'll go um, read our lesson number three. There's more in it. There's Bible quotes and things like that. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to use the contact on our website, truthwinds.com, and email us your questions or insights. We'd love to hear from you. Um, Please remember to like and subscribe. And anything else you'd like to say? To say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2022, the year for me and you. Yes. And also in Scottish, uh, the day of New Year is called Hogmanay. 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 Or it's Hogmanay, really. Hogmanay. Hogmanay. <laughs> or I'll just say Happy New Year's 2022. And we look forward to seeing you again soon with lesson number four.